Hello everyone! In this video, we are going to explore the different external and internal parts of the fish. So let's get our gloves, our scalpels, and let's go! First, let's explore the external parts of the fish. In this part, we are going to use the bangus as a model to show the external parts of the fish and define them. Caudal fin. It is a primary source of propulsion, facilitates speed and direction control. Anal fin. It contributes to stability, steering, and propulsion in certain species. Anus. It eliminates waste from the digestive system. Pelvic fins. It aid in steering, maintaining balance, and often play a role in reproduction. Dorsal fins. It provides stability, maneuverability, and serve as a defense mechanism. Lateral line. This allows the fish to determine the direction and rate of water movement. Pectoral fins. Allows for abrupt changes in side-to-side -side direction and speed. Ice. It facilitates vision for detecting prey, predators, and navigation. Mouth. It is essential for feeding, communication, and in some cases, breathing. Nostrils. Fish use these for smelling. Operculum and gills. It enable respiration by extracting oxygen from the water. Next, we will have a look at the external parts of the other fish, starting with the tilapia. For the next part, we will use the tilapia, also known as St. Peter's fish, as the model. First, we will view it in lateral view, then cranial, ventral, and finally, dorsal. Next, we will open the mouth of the fish and notice the motion of the jaw. Not only do fish use their mouths to eat, but also to pull in water in order to take in oxygen. This is why their mouths are able to open wide. Some fish can open their mouth wider than others. Example, the galungong that can open their mouth very wide to catch prey. As you can see inside the mouth, the tilapia has small teeth that helps it grasp prey similarly with periot, and unlike the bungus and matambaka who do not have teeth since they generally feed on algae and invertebrates. Next, we will take a probe and insert it into the mouth of the fish, gently pushing it in and through the operculum, which acts as a protective cover for the gills, helps in breathing, and also define the fish's head anatomy. Through this, we will be able to see the gills, which are the essential respiratory organs that allow them to extract oxygen from the water. Next, we have the internal parts of the fish. We will move on to opening the fish, and to do this, we are going to use a scalpel blade or a knife to cut through the skin and expose its internal organs. Gallbladder. It stores bile produced by the liver for fat digestion. Liver. It detoxifies, stores nutrients, and aids in digestion. Spleen. It filters blood, stores blood cells, and aids in the immune system. Heart. It pumps oxygenated blood throughout the body of the fish. Aorta. 
It distributes oxygen-rich blood from the heart to the body. Stomach. It temporarily stores food, initiate digestion, and regulate the flow of the food. Swim bladder. It regulates buoyancy, aiding in maintaining position in the water column. Intestines. It absorbs nutrients and water from digested food. Urinary bladder. It stores urine before excretion. Ovaries. It produces eggs and female fish for reproduction. Penis. It is a male reproductive organ responsible for transferring sperm during mating. Well, now, we will show the visual and external differences of the male and female based on the ventral view. So this is for the bangus, and this is for the male telapia, for the female telapia, and this is for the matambaka. Next is for the pirit. And finally, for the kalungko. And that's it for our video. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed.